No, Dr. Lim, I read your manifesto. And actually, to be honest with you, we could have written the same manifesto. We like that. So thanks for the question, Dr. Balakrishnan. I think uh, the kind of meta point uh, yes. that is being asked is that whether we are in fact uh, just equivalent to the PAP. And I think we have often emphasized in the Workers' Party that we do not necessarily object to policy just because of the sake of objection. Ultimately, what we want is the right policy. I think the fact that we're having a debate and agitating toward an answer is a step positive in that direction. Now, you have then went on to say that uh, what we have done is move to the left and the kind of underlying uh, query is that, well, perhaps by moving to the left, we are being irresponsible fiscally. Well, I, I, I would like to emphasize, within the manifesto, we have under, we have actually done the, the math behind it and everything within our budget uh, is, it actually is budget neutral. Now, what is true though is that it does entail a set of trade-offs yes. and I cannot em emphasize this enough. I think where we re fundamentally differ is where we think those trade-offs actually should occur. Now, the PAP would tend to side on, uh, on the side of capital. We think, in fact, that for every dollar of national income, Singaporean workers already receive an insufficient amount. 42 cents, compare that to 55 cents in Japan, uh, and, and much higher in other high-income countries. And we think that a rebalance of, of that kind of share of labor income is ultimately necessary. Very good. So I will likewise ask Dr. Yes. Balakrishna a meta yes. question. Sure. Uh, and, and the meta question is this, you have uh, listed all the policies, and I, I agree with the, the spirit of the policies, which is the PAP has put in one of the largest stimulus policies post-COVID-19. Yes. But how much has the PAP actually evaluated the efficacy of its policies? And I ask this in the context of things that were already raised. Dr. Chi mentioned that productivity, in spite of the fact that since 1972, mm -hmm. the PAP has tried uh, to raise productivity mm -hmm. unsuccessfully. You talk about the progressive rate, wage model, but yet, as Mr. Yuan pointed out, we are still in a position where we still, still see we the elderly. Get your question very soon. And, and that is the question. That it is how much the PAP has actually estimated the efficacy of the policies it rolls out. Because I uh, would have lack of confidence that their big budget mm -hmm. uh, might actually do the job. Well, thank half. you. Well, so I'm going to start by thanking Mr. Yun. I agree absolutely that a very big part of social mobility is ensuring that we take care of those that have already contributed to our economy and our society in the, in the years where they were putting in the effort. So we, need, we absolutely need to take care of our elderly that lives among us. I had shared previously in other fora that it is, it is really a crime that we, ha we see the elderly continue to feel that they have to work in order to have... Uh, make ends meet. So that is one of the, the elements of um, social mobility that we feel that, you know, elements like a minimum wage will actually help us move toward increasing social mobility. Now, uh, Dr. Chi mentioned as well about uh, education and as an educator myself, that warms the cockles of my heart. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we have moved away. When I was in school, we used to have an educational system where really there was equality of opportunities. But if you look at the schools now, you don't see that. And Dr. Chi mentioned one of the elements where we can actually bring about a greater equality by ensuring that the, the, the schools that are not the elite schools actually get a disproportionately higher mm -hmm. amount of uh, educational spending. Now, the other element which we feel strongly about is decreasing class sizes because I think this, uh, out, uh, ironically, ends up penalizing students that are in large classes and are forced to take lessons, uh, additional lessons out of the classroom in the form of private tuition. I enjoyed the debate actually, and I think this is exactly why uh, d debates about ideas for how Singapore should progress uh, should occur. And I think it's also clear from just from this debate that the PAP does not have a monopoly <coughs> on the best ideas on how we should bring the society forward. Now, the PAP has argued that this election is really about uh, giving them a mandate to bring the country out of this crisis. And they need this mandate in order to do so. Now, the truth is, the PAP in all likelihood will have this mandate by the end of this election. You and I think, I think that what, what we are trying to deny the PAP isn't 
a mandate. Mm. What we're trying to deny them is a blank check. And that is what I think uh, this election truly is about, so that we can actually have this kind of debates, not just in a constrained form over a table, but actually in the forum which was designed for this, which is Parliament. So if you believe, and I call on voters, if you believe in having all voices heard, if you believe that we succeed only when we have sound and rational debate about what matters, if you believe in the essence of a democratic modern society for the 21st century, then we ask that you make your vote count and that you will vote for the Workers' Party.